So in the last video, we went ahead and we looked at electrolysis and we calculated the cell voltage was negative. And we understand that as meaning a couple of things. One, the reaction will not proceed in the forwards direction. But two, it also tells us if we supply a voltage that's greater than the absolute value of that voltage, we can drive the reaction. So let's drive these electrolysis reactions. In fact, maybe we want to know how much product can we make? So what mass of product can we make? So we're going to do electrolysis and we're going to restrict ourselves to electrolysis of molten salts. Um, that is to say we've got ionic compounds. So we're going to take things like sodium chloride and we're going to melt them. So this is very unusual. We're writing this as an L. And remember, it's a salt. So essentially it is Na plus Cl minus. And we're going to drive the reaction into its elements. So we're going to take the salt and we're going to apply electricity to turn them into their elements. That's not all electrolysis, but it's the only kind we're going to look at. So we're going to look at sodium and chlorine and obviously the balance equation, we'd look something like that. Imagine we had something like alumina. So actually this uses up an incredible amount of electricity around the world. So the production of aluminum comes from alumina. In fact, uh, it wasn't too terribly long ago. We didn't really know how to do this. And uh, we can drive it and form aluminum and oxygen. And we can balance this by putting a two here, a four here, and a three here. So what's going on here is the aluminum right is aluminum ions, three positive. The oxygen is oxide, two negative, right? And we're converting it to aluminum, zero. So that would be, let's see, a loss of oxidation number. So that is reduction. And we're taking the oxygen and we're raising it in oxidation state from minus two to zero. So that is the oxidation process. So electrolysis, right, can be used to push these reactions in a direction that they otherwise wouldn't want to go. So what's the stoichiometry got to do with it? Well, it turns out that when we run an electrolysis reaction, we need to know two things. We need to know the current that we provide and we need to know the time. And if we know these two things, we can actually figure out the mass of the electrolysis products. So we're gonna restrict ourselves to electrolysis of molten salt. So we're gonna melt these ionic compounds and we're gonna push electricity through them to convert the ions into the elements by themselves. So what do we need to know? So first of all, we need to know what electric current is. And so electric current is measured in amperes and the ampere is given the symbol A. And if you remember right at the start of this class, we looked at the seven fundamental base units and we've used five of them. We've used moles, seconds, kilograms, meters, and Kelvin. And then the sixth one was ampere. And I said, it's going to take us a very long time. We'll get to it in April. Well, here we are in April. So we're just going to get into it. And luminous intensity, we won't use at all. So electrical current is measured in amperes. And it's the flow of charge over the course of time. So we can say current is another other than the flow of charge. We've measured charge in coulombs. And time, again, that was one of those base SI units. We used it in seconds. So if we give a symbol for these things. So the units might be A, C, and S, but the symbol for the quantity current is I, charge is Q, and time is T. So we can write our equation here as current equals charge over time and in terms of units it will have units of amperes coulombs and seconds so we can see actually that if this equation is correct which i promise you it is we know that one ampere is nothing other than the transfer of one coulomb of charge in every second so let's go ahead and do a calculation and the calculation will be what's the total charge transferred if 30 amps which is an enormously large current flows for 51 minutes and if you'd like to, you can pause the video and do this and check yourself. And otherwise, just kind of, well, keep pressing play, I suppose. So how would we do this? So we know that charge, sorry, we know that current is charge over time. So we can rearrange and find charge is current times by time. Current is 30 amps, so 30 coulombs per second. Time, well, we've got 51 minutes, but we can see those units don't cancel. So we got to get minutes into seconds. There's 60 seconds in a minute. So we can see there our minutes cancel, our seconds cancel. We're left with units of coulombs. And if we punch this in on our calculator, we get 37,800 coulombs. All right, that wasn't too bad.
Now you might be wondering, hey, isn't this a physics class at this point? Why are we talking about electrical current? We're chemists, so uh, we're learning about chemistry. And the interesting thing is that we can convert this to a number of moles of electrons, and then it becomes a stoichiometry problem. And you might say, well, how do I convert that to number of moles of electrons? Well, if you remember, the Faraday constant is 96,500, and it is the charge of one mole of electrons, or at least the absolute value of the charge. So we can use it as a conversion factor. And I basically just wrote it out because I knew that coulombs had to be on the bottom to cancel. Moles of electrons had to be on the top, right? That was the Faraday constant. So remember Michael Faraday? If you watch Lost and you are like, hey, wasn't that the guy on Lost? Well, actually the character was named after him. So he was a very famous scientist. And I used to do demonstrations in London and people would come from all around to watch them. So if we go ahead and we divide those, we get the number of moles of electrons, which is 0 0.39, let me see with a guard digit, 17 moles of electrons. So that was cool. 